it's, it's, it's so lame because all the past years I've had to do the questions basically by myself. And <laughs> it's not supposed to be the, the Khazan who's leading those questions. You know, it's supposed to be the next generation. So thank you. Thank you. And hope a nice year. You know, you'll be doing them with us again. Um, all right. Page 98. So a lot of education from now until Shavuot. We're going to be doing, going over Pirkei Avot uh, during Oneg, and we're going over the Hebrew of our service at 9. Um, and of course, I tutor throughout the week. Um, and we're looking at classes for Shavuot, and I'm open for about three to four hours of classes. Uh, if you're interested in leading class, please let me know. Page 98. Oh, okay. I thought you said you weren't singing it. Or am I singing it? We're singing it. We're all singing it together. Okay. <laughs> I'm help Jonathan's going to be helping with the English today, so I'm going to sit here to help him since it just all of a sudden happens. <laughs> There is none like you, Adonai. There is nothing like your deeds, Adonai. You rule eternally. Your kingdom lasts for all generations. Adonai rules. Adonai rules. Adonai will rule forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Merciful parent, favor Zion with your goodness. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. For we trust only you, ruler, God on high, sovereign of worlds. shall come from Zion, the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in holiness gave the Torah to Israel. Page 101. Praise be the name of the sovereign of the universe. Praise be your crown and your place. May your love for your people, Israel, last forever. And may the salvation of your right hand be revealed to your people in your holy house. Grant us goodness of your light and accept our prayer with mercy. May it be your will that we be granted a long, good life, and may I be counted among the righteous, so that you will be have mercy on me and protect me and all that is mine and all that belongs to your people, Israel. You are the one who nurses all and sustains all. You rule over all. You are the one who rules over earthly rulers, and sovereignty is yours. I am the blessed Holy One. I bow before God and before the honor of God's glory at all times. Not in any human do I trust, nor do I rely on any angel, but in the God of heaven, who is the true God, and whose story is true, and his prophets are true, and who all the deeds and goodness is true. In 
God who I trust, in God's holy honor name, I speak praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to Torah and completely answer my heart's desires and those of your people Israel for good, for life, and for peace. Amen. <laughs> today's Torah reading portion. Um, did anyone see and was confused about what portion we were reading today? We are in the Pesach cycle, mm-hmm. which means today is Pesach day number three, um, which means we're coming, becoming out of the book of Shemot, chapter 33. Um, and, uh, well, you'll see how it relates in a little bit. But during the, high, uh, during the holy season, we read specialty readings. Uh, and so, I'm going to go ahead, and Yonatan, I'm going to ask you just to give the first blessing. Baruch Adonai Haverach, Baruch Adonai Haverach, Leolam Vayed, Baruch Adonai, Baruch Adonai, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bakobano Miko Hamin, Venatan lanat et torato, Baruch ata donai, no ten hap torah. Usually that would be person making all the Ataloho, Adotani, Adotani, eh, a sheher, Kisho, a tishlak, a moho, a ta a moho, yade, tepa, a shen de gaham, meets a mitoti, a hey beneha, a ta a mihi, parkinaha, a matsiti, a hey beneha, a Ode, Ode, ni naha, Ode, ni naha, Ehet, Yerkakaha, Ratma, 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 
Amitz, 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 Amata, Behebana, Koraha, the Ameha, Hazo, Hai Hazehe, Vayamer, Penehe, Yahoo, Aha, Niko, Tihi, Maha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher nakam lano toret emet vehaye olam nata betoheinu Baruch atah Adonai noten hav Torah. Our fathers, Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov, bless Yonatan ben Avraham, who has been called in honor of the All Present, in honor of the Torah, and in honor of the Shabbat. As a reward for this, may the Holy One, blessed be He, protect and deliver him from all troubles and distress, all infection and illness, and send blessing and success to all the work of His hands, together with all of these while His brethren, and let's say, Amen. 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 This is Exodus 33, 16 through 19. I will also do what you have asked me to do, because you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. But Moshe said, I beg you to show me your glory. He replied, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. In your presence, I will pronounce the name of the Lord. Moreover, I show favor to whomever I will, and I will display mercy to whomever I will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On my face, he continued, you cannot see, because a human being cannot look at me and remain alive. Here, he said, is a place near me. Stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you inside a crevice in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face is not yours to be seen. Next is Exodus 34, 20 through 3. Adonai said to Moshe, Cut yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will describe on the tablets the words that were on the first ta tablets, which you broke. Be ready by morning. In the morning you are to ascend Mount Sinai and present yourself to me on top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you, and no one is to be seen anywhere on the mountain. Don't even let the flocks or herds be in front of this mountain. Next is Exodus 34, 3 through 10. Moshe cut two stone tablets like the first. Then he got up early in the morning, and with the two stone tablets in his hand, ascended Mount Sinai as Adonai had ordered him to do. Adonai descended into cloud, stood with him there, and pronounced the name of Adonai. Adonai, 
ask before him to proclaim. Your deep God, he, your deep God, he, Adonai is God, merciful and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in grace and truth, showing grace to the thousandth generation, forgiving offenses, crimes and sins, yet not exonerating the guilty, but causing the negative effects of the parents' offenses to be experienced by their children and grandchildren, and even by the third and fourth generations. At once Moshe brought his head to the ground, prostrated himself, and said, If I have found favor in your view, Adonai, then please let Adonai go with us, even though they are a stiff and feeble. Pardon our offenses and our sin, and take us as your possession, he said. Here I am making a covenant in front of all your people. I will do wonders, such as have not been created anywhere on earth, or in any nation. All the people around me, you will see the work of Adonai. What am I going to do third? You will be amazed. Awesome. Emmy? This next portion is chapter 34, 11 through 17. Observe what I am ordering you to do today. Here, I'm driving out ahead of you the Emory. Tenalami, Kiki, Krizi, Hibi, and Kibisi. Be careful not to make a covenant with these people living in the land where you are going, so that they won't become a snare within your own borders. Rather, you are to demolish their altars, snatch their standing stones, and cut down their sacred poles, because you're not to bow down to any other god since Adonai, whose na very name is Jealous, he is a jealous god. Do not make a covenant with these people living in the land. They will probably go astray after their gods and sacrifice to their gods. Then they will invite you to join them in eating their sacrifices, and you will take and you will take their daughters as wives for your sons. Don't their daughters will prostitute themselves to their own gods and make your sons do the same. Do not cast no vows to your sons. All right, and the last portion is chapter 34, 18 through 26. Keep the festival of matzah by eating matzah as I ordered you for seven days during the month of Aviv, for it was in the month of Aviv that you came out from Egypt. Everything that is first from the womb is mine. Of all your livestock, you are to set aside for me and the males, the firstborn of cattle and flock, the firstborn of the donkey, you must redeem with a lamb. If you won't redeem it, break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you are to redeem, and no one is to appear before me empty-handed. Six days you will work, but on the seventh day you are to rest. Even in plowing time and harvest season you are to rest. Observe the festival of Shavuot with the first gathered produce of the wheat harvest, and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. <coughs> Three times a year all the men are to appear before the Lord Adonai, the God of Israel. For I am going to expel nations ahead of you and expand your territory. And no one will even covet your land when you go up to appear before Adonai, your God, three times a year. You are not to offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. And the sacrifice of the feast of Pesach is not to be left until morning. You are to bring the best first fruits of your land into the house of, your, of Adonai, your God. You are not to boil a young goat in its mother's milk. And now we have commentary. So this is actually one of my favorite passages in the Torah. Um, and I feel like I say this all the time, but I remember a couple months where I just taught this passage um, to the young adult group at uh, the vineyard. But it's because we had to stress it again and again and again, the importance of this passage. You see, Moshe had seen the burning bush. and He had beheld all the plagues of Egypt. He had seen the parting of the Red Sea. And he spent weeks with God, literal weeks with God, on Mount Sinai and personally carried the tablets of the testimony to the camp of Israel. Yet, in this Torah portion, we actually see his heart's cry. He says, show me your glory. You see, in Moshe's mind, all the past glories were insufficient. And he needed more. So God responds with the longest description that he gives of himself in the entirety of the scripture. The Lord, the Lord, great compassion. He gives the longest description in Scripture, and he says, this is how I'm going to reveal myself to you. I'm going to put you into a cleft in the rock. 
I'm going to make my glory to pass before you. But we don't actually see what that glory looked like in the scripture. And as soon as it happens, Adonai gives him more commandments, more mitzvot. And I want us to think about this passage. You see, because Moshe is a role model for us, he's a role model for me. What is the heart, what is the cry of our hearts? What is the purpose of Pesach? Do we, like Moshe, refuse to be satisfied with what we have already received? Or are we satisfied? I think that might be a purpose of this season where we fast from leaven. Why are we fasting from leaven? It's because hunger is good. What we're doing is we're denying a place in our lives for food. Instead, we're filling it with more of God and his glory. Physical hunger can lead to spiritual hunger if it's done correctly. Just as Moshe received a new revelation, he also received more mitzvot. This shows us that new insights uh, into the word of God also brings new responsibilities. The responsibilities are designed to maintain God's presence in our lives, keep our physical appetites at bay, and bring his divine presence into the world around us, all of which are themes of the holiday. So, to condense, are we satisfied? The answer should be no. We might have had past glories, we want more. But understand that the past glories lead to more responsibility. And once you have more glory, he's going to raise the quality, he's going to raise the standard of your holiness. He's going to make you live at a higher level. So you want more glory? Be prepared for more responsibility. But also know that he'll send you his spirit to enable you to do it. Is there anyone who has recovered from a serious illness, survived from, returned from a long journey, or survived any kind of major including chapter that would like to share, or something good happened that you like to share or prayer request? Sure. I spent, uh, spent four days in the hospital this last uh, week before last. Uh, I was septic. I uh, stayed on uh, uh, antibiotics the whole time that I was there. But the amazing thing that happened through that wasn't the fact that I was healed. It was the fact that a nurse came in and asked me what book I was reading in the Bible. So I told her. She said, well, you know... Uh, I think I'm saved. I said, are you? She, I, I said, are you baptized? She said, yeah, I'm baptized, but I'm not sure I'm, I'm, if that it covers me. Should I be baptized again? I said, well, if you have a doubt, maybe you need to speak to your pastor. But the baptism isn't what saved you. What saved you is Yeshua Messiah. And she sat down in the room, and we had a discussion about it, and it blew my mind. <laughs> so when it was over, I had nothing to do but cry for joy. It was yes. wonderful. Ah, okay. yeah. 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 Yes. Right. And we should continue to pray for this lady that the Lord will draw her more and more as well. What a wonderful story. I'm sorry that he made you go through that for her, but that is amazing. It's and okay. we're glad that you're doing well. Her name is Michelle Owens. Michelle Owens. Okay, let's keep Michelle prayed too. Um... I was able to get a shot in my knee yesterday, which is really great because I'm in a lot of pain. So I'm so grateful that, and that just came out of nowhere. I called and they said, you can come right now. So I'm so thankful to the Lord for that. So Chuck, would you like to read the blessing You'll come in English page. on page 107? 107, sure. Let me go to second. Praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who acts kindly towards the undeserving and has dealt kindly with me. At this time, Jill and Carol are going to come up and we're going to do some prayers for the congregation. Mark 9, 
created according to God's will. May God establish the divine kingdom soon in our days, quickly and in the near future, and let us say amen. amen. May God's great name be praised forever and ever. Blessed praise, glorified and raised high, honored and elevated be the name of the Holy Blessed One. Far beyond all blessings and songs, praises and comforts, which people can say, and let us say Amen. amen. Let's go ahead. Like to up. Oh, 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 oh,
This is the Torah which Moses set before the Israelites as God's word by Moses' hand. It's a tree of life for those who hold on to it and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant and all its ways are peaceful. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise to you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses, your servant, and Israel, out of your people, the prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Okay. With the hand of Adonai, upon me, Adonai carried out, carried me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He had me pass by all around them. There were so many bones lying in the valley, and they were so dry. He asked me, human being, can these bones live? I answered, Adonai Elohim, only you know that. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones. Say to them, dry bones, hear what Adonai has to say. To these bones, Adonai Elohim says, I will make breath enter you, and you will live. I will attach ligaments to you. Make flesh grow on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you. You will live, and you will know that I am not alive. So I prophesied as ordered, and while I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. It was the bones coming together, each bone in its proper place. As I watched, ligaments grew on them, flesh appeared, and skin covered them. There was no breath in them. Next, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, human being, say to the breath that Adonai Elohim says, Come from the four winds, breathe, breathe, breath and breathe on these slain, so that they will live. So I prophesied as ordered, and the breath came into them, and they were alive. They stood on their feet, a huge army. Then he said to me, human being, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they are saying, our bones have dried up, and our hope is gone. And we have, we are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy. Say to them that Adonai Elohim says, My people, I will open your graves and make you get up out of your graves, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Adonai. And I will open your graves and make you get up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you, and you will be alive. Then I will place you in your own land, and you will know that I, Adonai, have spoken, that I have done it, says Adonai. Sorry. <laughs> Praise to you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it, and it is done, who speaks, and is fulfilled. Okay. Our second reading from the Brit Hadasha comes from Luke. Chapter 23, verses 42 through 56. 
That's Luke chapter 23, verses 42 through 56. Then he said, Yeshua, remember me when you come as king. Yeshua said to him, Yes, I promise that you will be with me one day in Gan Eden. It was now about noon, and darkness covered the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun did not shine. Also, the parapet in the temple was split down the middle, crying out with a loud voice. Yeshua said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he gave up his spirit. When the Roman officer saw what had happened, he began to praise God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowds that had gathered to watch the spectacle saw the things that had occurred, they returned, beating their breasts. All his friends, including the women who had accompanied him to the Galil, had been standing at a distance. They saw it all. There was a man named Yosef, a member of the Sanhedrin. He was a good man, a Sadiq, and he had not been in agreement with either the Sanhedrin's motivation or their actions. He came from the town of Ramatayim, a town of the Judeans, and he looked forward to the kingdom of God. This man approached Pilate and asked for Yeshua's body. He took it down, wrapped it in a linen sheet, and placed it in the tomb, cut into the rock that had, been ne that had never been used. It was a preparation day, and the Shabbat was about to begin. The women who had come with Yeshua from the Galil followed. They saw the tomb and how his body was placed in it. Then they went back home to prepare spices and ointments. On Shabbat, the women rested in obedience to the commandment. Praised are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it, and it is done, who speaks, and it is fulfilled. Page 117. For, for all God's words are truth and righteousness. You are faithful, Adonai our God, and your words are trustworthy. And not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled. For you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praised are you, Adonai, the, the God who is dependable in all your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's home. Save the humbled soul quickly and on our day. Praised are you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai, our God, with Elijah the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your anointed. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you vow to him by your holy name that his light would never be extinguished. Praised are you, Adonai, shield of David. For your, for your Torah and for the worship and for the prophets, and for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai our God, for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor, and for all these, Adonai our God, we thank you and praise you by your name. Be praised perpetually forever. Praised are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat Amen. for your Torah and for the worship and for the prophets and for this Shabbat day and for this festival of Matzot that you gave us, Adonai our God, for holiness and for rest. For joy and gladness, for glory and splendor, and all these, that and I are God, we thank you and praise you. May your name be praised by all that live and perpetually forever. Praised are you, Adonai, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat and Israel and the festivals. Amen. Page 121 of the Prayer for Our Country, and Prince Robert, how do that? Could you please read this along with me, remembering that it is a prayer and not just words? Our God and God of our ancestors, please accept with mercy our prayer for our land and its government. Teach our leaders to value your Torah, help them understand your rules and righteousness, so that our land may never lack peace and tranquility, prosperity and freedom. Out of my God of spirit to all flesh, send your spirit to all the inhabitants of our land, and plant love and brotherhood. Peace and friendship among all the nationalities and faiths who dwell in it. Uproot from their hearts any hatred or enmity, jealousy or rivalry, to fulfill the yearnings of your children, who like and honor and desire to see it be a light for all the nations. 
May it be your will that our land be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world, and that friendship and freedom reign between them, and that the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. Our heavenly parent, rock of Israel and its redeemer, bless the state of Israel, first father of our redemption. Show them by your loving means and spread our riches to the peace. Send your life and truth to its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and guide them rightly with your good advice. Strengthen the hands of the defenders of our holy land and lead them to God to deliverance. Crown their efforts with victory. Grant peace to the land and eternal happiness to its inhabitants, and let us pray. Amen. Page 128. Let's stand up. God's name. Bow before Adonai in the beauty of holiness. Adonai's voice is over the waters. The God of glory thunders Adonai. Adonai is over the many waters. Adonai's voice sounds with power. Adonai's voice sounds with beauty. Adonai's voice breaks cedars. Adonai shatters the cedars of Lebanon. God makes them leap like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a wild ox. Adonai's voice carves out flames of fire. Adonai's voice makes the desert quake. Adonai makes the desert of Kadesh quake. Adonai's voice causes deer to give birth and strips the forest bare. In God's sanctuary, all speak of God's glory. Adonai sent enthroned at the flood. Adonai is enthroned as ruler forever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Page 134. When the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, Adonai, to the millions of Israel. Rise up, Adonai, to your resting place, the temple, you and the ark of your strength. May your priests be clothed in righteousness and your faithful sing with joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. I have given you good teaching. Do not leave my Torah. 
It is a tree of life for those who hold on to it, and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant, and all its ways are peaceful. Return to us, return us to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as in days of old. It's Kaiyuki on page 134 down at the bottom. The the is holy and commandment is fully upright and good. Contentment awaits those who hear the word of God and observe it. To the only wise God, but to the only wise God, Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah, be the glory forever, be the glory forever, be the glory forever, forever, amen. And uh, for those of you who know this song, mm-hmm. let's go ahead and sing just another little song together. If you don't know it, no pressure. Ye nay mato huma naim, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, in unity. La 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 la. In unity, in unity. La 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 la. Why did we sing Hine Matov right there? Good question. Let's talk about it. We are currently going through Romans 12, 9 through 21. What is that word, Yachad? What does the word Yachad even sound like? It sounds like another word. It sounds like Echad. It sounds like Echad. Echad means one. So Yachad is in unity. In unity. Let me bring my center, please. This is not as comfortable as I thought it would be. Yes. Here we go. Let's talk about this. Don't let love be mere outward show. In other words, love must be combined with action. Recoil from what is evil, cling to what is good. Two parts of the same commandment. Love each other devotedly with brotherly love. We're going to focus on that bit today. Let's set examples for each other and showing respect. Don't be lazy when hard work is needed, but serve the Lord with spiritual fervor. Rejoice in your hope, be patient in your troubles, and continue steadfastly in prayer. Share what you have with God's people and practice hospitality. That's the first paragraph. The second paragraph goes like this. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, don't curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. This is this week. Be sensitive to each other's needs. Don't think better than your are uh, better than others. Don't think you're better than others, but make humble friends. Your uh, make humble people yourselves. Be sensitive to each other's needs. That's one way of translating it. Other translations I think are a bit more conventional. Um, live in harmony with one another, or be of the same mind with one another. And what I see here is a lot more of that concept of yachad. Unity, harmony. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. 
The word there literally means like how we think of each other, how we are um, our minds toward one another, the Greek word. And I could definitely see how, you know, being mindful of each other's needs would be, would kind of tie into that. But most people say it's like of the same mind, be unified in your thinking. And so I want to talk about living in harmony. I want to tie in with Psalms 133, which is what we just read. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. We talked about this probably a couple months ago now. Um, that Messianic Judaism, the Jewish nation, is a nation of brotherhood. It's one of family. I use brotherhood. It's kind of patriarchal when I use words like that. But you get the idea. Sisterhood is included in that. We are family. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to live together in harmony, in unity and in harmony. So I have a, uh, a Roman Catholic uh, acquaintance on Facebook, and he talks to me a lot about unity. And he says, you know, the Roman Catholic Church, we're unified. He says, Protestants, you can't get along about anything. And of course, what's the natural reply to him about Protestantism and Messianic Judaism? Messian, what? Apples and oranges. Apples and oranges. Messian Judaism is not Protestant. Protestant was like Luther breaking out from the Reformation. Luther would have hated us. Yeah. Messianic Judaism goes far before Roman Catholicism. I see it all the way back to the mystery of Yeshua. I see it in the um, in Acts chapter two when the disciples are gathered together to worship for Shavuot, a Jewish holiday. I see it in uh, Acts chapter three where they're gathered together. Um, and they are, um, I'm sorry, uh, act, or they're uh, in the temple, praying the Amidah. I see in Acts chapter 15, where they write Halakha for Gentile believers. I see in Acts 21, where they're offering a sacrifice in the temple, a Nazarite sacrifice. I see it in Acts chapter 28, where Paul says, I've never done anything against the laws or the traditions of our people. I see a Jewish movement. But the truth of the matter is, my Catholic friend, his acquaintance, is still wrong. You see, unity does not mean that we are all under the same umbrella organization, nor does it mean that we all think the same, necessarily. But we're of the same mind. We are unified in purpose. And one of the worst things that can happen to any body of believers is division for all the wrong reasons. So, before we even get into this, Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to verse 10. Nevertheless, brothers, I call on you in the name of the Lord Yeshua the Mashiach to agree, all of you, in what you say, and not to let yourselves remain split into factions, but restore, be restored into having a common mind and a common purpose. For some of closed peoples have made it known to me, my brothers, that there are quarrels among you. I say this uh, because one of you says, I follow Shaul, another I follow Apollos, another I follow Kepha, that's Peter, while others say, I follow Mashiach. Has the Mashiach been split into pieces? Was it Shaul? Who has put a stake for you? You were immersed into the were you immersed into the name of Shaul? I thank God that I didn't baptize or immerse or put any of you into a mikvah, except for Crispus and Gaius. Otherwise, someone might say that you were indeed immersed into my name. Oh yes, I did also immerse Stephanus and his household. Beyond that, I can't remember whether I immersed anyone. You see, here's the truth of the matter. There's always going to be division, and people are always going to see things differently. There's a great Jewish saying, two Jews, three opinions. And it's true. We all have different points of view. And an absolute unity of all of our ideas is not necessary. Some follow Paulus, some follow Paul. They had slightly different teachings, but they were still unified in mind and in purpose. Now, when I look at this passage, I must conclude 
that we're supposed to be agreeing, at least in how we think of each other. And we must be mindful of each other. This is important because many Messianic Jewish congregations, I feel, exist because they exist for the fringe. They exist because they don't know what they believe, but they know what they don't believe. I decided that Christmas is pagan. I must be a Messianic Jew. I've decided that, fill in the blank, I've decided that Sunday worship is pagan. I must be a Messianic Jew. I've even heard, I've, I know people, I've met people who, they cannot get along with any church they go to, so they come here. They say, I must be Messianic Jewish after all. Guess what happens to that type? They get offended, they leave. We are not defined by what we don't believe, we're defined by what we do believe. And we must be unified in spirit in how we think of each other. And we must, right when we look at each other, we must know that we are looking at Messiah. When I look out across the room, all of us together, it very much, you know, we might have different beliefs, but we are unified in Messiah. <clears throat> because all of Israel is family. All of Israel is family. So, I told you I would look at this. If we look at Psalms 133, how delightful and pleasant it is for brethren, that's family, to dwell together, that's unity, that's harmony. This sentence right here, uh, Romans 12, 16, uh, be sensitive to each other's needs, live in harmony with one another, it works in conjunction with uh, what he says earlier, uh, love each other devotedly with brotherly love. With brotherly love love. It works together. Because we do see each other as brothers, we will also have a unifying affection for one another. Behold how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. But this verse is a little bit different. When you see verses that are basically the same, repeating after one after the other, start looking for the distinction. What's the distinction? The distinction is this. In the first one, he's talking about brothers. And it's all good. It's all about zeal and love. But the second paragraph, he changed his tone from the second paragraph. Bless those who persecute you. Um, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be sensitive to each other's needs. Don't think yourself better than others. Make friends with humble people. Don't be conceited. Repay no one for evil for evil. Do to everyone what is good. Do not avenge yourself. If I can pick up a theme of the second paragraph, it is being unified with people who make us uncomfortable. The humble people, the people who are doing trodden, the people who are weeping, the people who are persecuting us, the people that we want to avenge ourselves on. So brotherly affection is when it's easy, but the second commandment, verse 16, the live in harmony, is to live in harmony when it's difficult. I encourage us to always look very carefully at the commands of scripture and say, how is this sentence different than the next sentence if they sound similar? What is the distinction that's being highlighted? And so what we're going to find is that in any family, there are going to be people who are difficult to get along with. In any congregation, there are people that I love to spend time with. And there are going to be people that I think, oh, they're going today, aren't they? Oh, gosh. What are they going to say to me this time? That little jab that they just have to make every single week or year. You know? And unfortunately, that's just family life. But it's part of our calling to live in harmony with one another. And so I'll tell you something that just made me happy this week. The Lord's been very faithful to me. Uh, my typical prayer partner, partners for uh, morning shakarit were not available this week. Uh, Greg was out of town and Gabriel has been not well for quite some time. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to come here and pray alone in front of a camera again, aren't I? I really hate that. Um, it's very lonely. Because prayer was meant to be enjoyed with the fellowship. Prayer was meant to be enjoyed with brothers and sisters. And the Lord was good to me because I come in Monday morning and Kelly is here. And he puts on a prayer shawl and we just we pray through the prayers together. And then I come Wednesday and Carol and Bill and Carol are here. And we pray through the Shema together. That was good. And then the next day I think it was Jimmy. Or maybe it was Kelly again. But every single day this week I have had people to pray with. And I want to say that that is the essence of spiritual life. It is coming together and praying together and sharing our lives with one another. 
And my personal favorite part actually comes even after the prayers. This when usually I pray for about an hour in the mornings, 9 to 10. What we do after that is we grab a cup of coffee, we go into the back, and we just talk. And I'll tell you what these conversations look like. I ask usually Greg a question, he answers it, and I say, hmm, think about it a little bit differently, think about it from this angle. And I, it, Greg wasn't available this week, so it was Kelly. I asked Kelly a question, Kelly answered, and I said, eh, think about it this way. You know, and what it is, is it's becoming a process of, I've walked with the Lord in this capacity for many years now. I've got a lot of little lock picks. I've got a lot of little treats here and there, and like little nuggets. And what I do is I'm just giving away everything I can to everybody who comes, because we are felt we are family. And I told the Lord, I said, I don't, I, 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 I think I told Kelly, I said, I don't care who comes in the mornings. I'll pray with them. I don't care who comes. I'll drink coffee with them and discuss this with them, because this is our faith and it's important. And so that's what fellowship looks like. That's what it means to live in harmony with one another. Sometimes people come by in the mornings that are kind of difficult. Not as much anymore. Um, but that's family life. It's not, did we come on Shabbat and say some prayers in Hebrew that we may or may not understand, and then we heard a message and then we went home. What it is is, well, we spent an hour drinking coffee. We spent an hour praying together. We spent an hour reading scripture together. You see, this is the essence of our spiritual lives, and it is spiritual harmony. It is brothers living together. So let me ask you this. How are we living in harmony with one another? Does our idea of harmony mean that we just don't fight? Gosh, I could get that in the world. I could get that going to Walmart. Actually, I could probably get that out to the Elks Club. Okay? You know, I, I've always heard that. I don't even know what the Elks Club is. But I could get that anywhere. I could get that anywhere. Um, the absence of struggle is not what defines the Messian Jewish life. What defines the believing life is sharing together daily in constant fellowship. That is Messian Jewish life. That is true discipleship. How many of us have heard that term before, discipleship? We stress discipleship. What in the world is discipleship? Is that a class? It could be, I guess. But it's so much more. It's so much more. It is constant living together let me give you everything that Messiah has given me, I give to you. Anything that you have from the Lord, I receive as well. But let me give it to you. And you'll know a true disciple when they start to talk like you. And then they start to replicate what you're saying to other people. I'm not, I'm using Greg, hi Greg if you're watching this. Um, I'm, not, I'm using Greg as an example. You know, he and I have been uh, praying together and seeking for a couple months. And I find it very interesting. He's about to move. And what's he doing? What are his plans for when he moves? We're giving him a stender, by the way. He wants to start a minyan out of his home group. Amazing. That is the art of replication. What is the true, what is the fruit of an apple tree? An apple tree. Apple. An apple tree. Cricket said it. The true fruit of an apple tree is another apple tree. Another one that produces. A family tree of trees, right? The idea is when I invest into people, I'll give them whatever Hashem wants me to give them, and eventually they're going to take that and they're going to give it out to other people. I come here not just to feed you. That would just be kind of a dead end street. I give it to you so you can give it to others and you can give, they can give to others. Paul says, follow me as I follow Messiah. In other words, I follow Messiah, Messiah gives to me, I give to you, you give. And the fruit of, of Paul's ministry, Rob Scholl's ministry, continues to this day. He wrote these books for us and we're still reading them, we're still quoting them, we're still living by them. Wonderful, wonderful books explaining everything that we need to know about salvation. And James also produced fruit. And James produced a very different kind of book, but it's about how to live a holy life. Guys, we're called to live in harmony. We're called to live more than just not fighting 
we're called to actually share life together. Here's a verse from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And it's one of one thing you get the poster from the back. I made a poster about this. Acts 2, 42. He continued faithfully in the teachings of the apostles, in fellowship, in breaking bread, and in prayers. Four things. The apostles' teachings, that's the New Testament. Um, fellowship, the Kabbalah. The breaking of bread, that is shared meals. And the prayers. Prayers, plural. Not prayer singular, prayer plural. So we pray day in, day out. Why do I say it's prayers? I believe they prayed the liturgies. Morning, afternoon, evening. Shachrit, Mincha, Ma'arib. And they probably did it in the temple. But at the very least, they did it in each other's homes. They, con they continued constantly in the New Testament, fellowship, sharing meals, and prayers. If we come here and we listen to teachings, well, that's from the apostles. That's the scripture. If we go to Oneg, we're sharing a meal together. Not, not a lot of meals, but one. And if you come at 10, we're praying together. And there's, of course, fellowship mixed throughout. Today's a good example of all four. But I suggest to you that this is a lifestyle. I want you to come to my home and celebrate Kiddush with me. Or we can do it here. I want to go to your home and have Pabdala with you. And I want to meet you on Tuesday afternoon not Tuesday, that's my off day. I want to meet you Wednesday. I want to meet you Wednesday so we can have dinner together or lunch or fill the blanks. I want to meet with you. And I hope that you are meeting with others and sharing the life that you have with them. We just heard a story um, just a few moments ago. Um, I'm not going to repeat names, but about um, someone in this room who was in a hospital and reading the scripture and they shared life with a nurse. That's exactly what this life looks like. It is sharing, receiving, and sharing. And I'll end with a warning. About two weeks ago, I had someone here who told me that he would that he doesn't go out trying to make disciples. Not, or I'm not talking converts. I'm talking disciples. Because he said, and this is his exact words. He said, "If I share, then I'm just building my own kingdom." And I'm, ser I'm serving a corrupted altar. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. Um, but he said, I don't know the power of God. He says, I don't think the power of God is present like it was in the Bible. And I'm thinking, to, if I could go back in time, I would say, you're absolutely right. You don't have the power of God because you're not willing to make disciples. Right. Rabbi Yeshua taught us that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will go out yes. making disciples Amen. in all of Jerusalem, Amen. Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Making disciples, giving what Yeshua has given you, is connected with the power of God. Right. If you lack the power of God, you are not making. If you're not making disciples, you will lack the power of God and the victory over sin. Right. And you don't have to be a teacher like me up here on a little stage, uh, on a little bima, in order to make Talmudim disciples. You don't have. To, that's that's beside the point. You can do it. I'm stressing this over coffee. Pretty soon, I think you're going to see Kelly up here with me here a lot because I, I don't want to speak too soon. But it seems to me that he's really coming under my wing, and I, if that's part of my job, is I'm training him now. We raise up disciples, and the idea is disciples make disciples, more disciples, more disciples. And the teachings that Mashiach has given me, I give to you, and you give to others, and they're allowed to go on forever. The scripture says, "I will forget none of your words." I will forget nothing that you have done for me. Too many people forget everything that Hashem has done for them. And he forgets, they forget everything that he's done for our nation. He forgets everything that he's done for us uh, at the cross. And everything since then. They forget what, they've, what God has done for them in their own lives. And scripture charges us not to forget and not let it be forgotten. So, living in harmony. A lot of ideas here, but to boil it down. It's more than just not arguing. It's sharing. It's life. It's fellowship together. My question to you is, are you discipling? 
Are you being a true Talmud of your of your rabbi and spreading his teachings, or are you being a dead end street where water flows and piles up and just kind of gets mucky, or are we a stream that keeps on forwarding everything he's given us? I can't answer that question for you. You must answer it for yourself. And if you decide you're not sharing, then this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray that you are given opportunities to share what he's given you with other people. Mm-hmm. And I talk about the next generation. I'm being metaphoric because you should end up sharing with people who are older than me. Um, it's just the way it goes. Um, but I understand that when it goes from one faith to the next, one deep to the next, it is generation to generation. And we are now a generational faith. We're going back to the language of family, which is what we are. So, uh, Turn in your Siddur to read 162. Okay, we almost tripped up on that stage. In Kalahina, there is none like our God, there is none like our sovereign, there is none like our rulers, there is none like our deliverer. In Kalahina, in Kalahina, in Kalahina, in Kalahina, in Kalahina, in Praise the ruler of all. Tell the greatness of the Creator for not making us like the other peoples and families of the earth, nor giving us the same destiny. We bend the knee and bow and give thanks to the ruler of all, earthly rulers, the blessed Holy One. God spread out the heavens and built the earth's foundations, and lives in the glory in the heavens. God's mighty presence is high above. God is our God, no one else. Our ruler is true. There is nothing besides God. As it is written in his Torah, you shall know therefore this day and keep in mind that Adonai alone is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other. Oh, 
Zechariah said, Then God will be ruler over all the earth. On that day God will be one, and God's name will be one. You may be seated. If there's anyone who is grieving the loss of a loved one, or you're coming up on an anniversary, you can rise to do the mourner's kaddish with us. And is there anyone who would like to read it today? May you go out in the grace and peace of our Master Yeshua the Mashiach. Remember that we are going to be reading Pirkei Avot together, the first chapter. We'll be having some slight discussion about it. Um, as we go ahead and leave tonight, I want to end with just one more song. Um, so, do you know what's going along? I'll go ahead and finish off with this one. I think it's a good one. How about this? I read. I sing some of the Hebrew. You sing some of the English. You don't have to speed up my. You don't have to speak sing the speed, but I want you to hear it. I don't know, Bama Sheriff Malach, but Terem call you tear to me, bra. But I'm sorry, page 170. But a not so they so cold as I may let you know, me, bra. The octagon rate, he cloaked the hock cold. The water, me, look, no raw. The who I yah, the who hope that. The who ekad, the tifa raw. The who ekad, the ain't shame me. The hum seal ball, the hock be raw. The lee, ray sheep, the lee, tuck the Torkev Lee, the Eight Sara, the Hu Nisi, Uman Nos Lee, Menak to a Kosi, the Yom of the Yom Ephra, the Yado Eki Rupi, the Eight Isha, the Eight Asira, the Eight Rupi, the Eight Akriyati, Adonai Lee, the Loira. I might start closing out with that one. We'll just kind of like sing whoever wants who can join me as we close out. But that is Adonai Lam, he is born over all the universe. Forever his name will be exalted. He ruled, existed before anything that was created. When all made was made by God's will, then God was known as ruler. When everything ends at the end of time, God will still reign alone. God was, is, and will be in splendor. God's one, and there is none other than compares, without beginning, without end, power and authority of God. My God live in living redeemer, the sheltering rock in times of trouble. God is my banner and my shelter, fill my cup on the day I call. Into God's hand I place my spirit, when I sleep I will be awake, um, and when I am awake. And with, with my spirit, my body too, that night is with me. I shall not fear. Amen. What beautiful words to end on. Go out, enjoy some Oneg, and we'll see you in a little bit, or whoever wants to, for Pirkei Take care.